grace, mercy, and peace to all of you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The lesson for our meditation this morning is the gospel lesson read a moment ago from Matthew 18. And our sermon theme today is entitled, Pay Up. Dear friends and beloved brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, most of us probably can strongly relate to the earthly idea of debt. It's always been a necessary part of our personal and business finances. There's something that we really, really need, but we don't have the money to pay the entire price for it, but we do have money to pay a little bit at a time. So after making these periodic partial payments, we then pay it off over time. So in these arrangements, the unpaid balance that we owe, that is our debt. And we know how it is. You have to have a home to live in. So when we go to buy a house, very few people have enough money to pay cash for a house. You have to arrange financing through a mortgage company because we don't have the money to pay for it in full. So in closing, we claim that we own the home, but in actuality, we do not, in fact, own the home. The finance company does. And you also need a car to get around to go to work, to handle all of your affairs. And you usually have to buy those over time, too, because cars often are too expensive to pay cash for. So debt has become more and more prominent in the lives of Americans. Credit cards are very easy to get, and debt is really easy to run up. But sometimes it can be not so easy to pay back. But we have to pay back the debt. If we just don't make our car payment, they come and take the car. If we don't pay for our house, they come and take the house away and make us leave. If we don't pay for the credit cards... They take away our privilege of and our ability to get a loan in the future. So each and every single month, our earthly creditors send us a bill and tell us, pay up. Well, it just so happens that this idea of paying up is a prominent theme in the gospel lesson today from Matthew 18. In the text, you heard Jesus tell a parable that gives us quite a bit of insight into the mind and the heart of God. So Peter asked the question regarding how often he should keep forgiving his brothers and sisters, and in response, Jesus tells a parable about a slave who owed this enormous debt to his master. Naturally, as it always does, the time came for the master to collect the payment, so when the slave was unable to pay up, the master ordered him and his family to be sold to try to raise the money. But the slave begged for mercy. And the master showed mercy. The master forgave the slave's debt. But then, that same slave met a fellow servant who owed him a debt that was significantly smaller. And instead of showing his fellow servant, the forgiveness he received, the slave commanded his friend to pay up. And when his friend couldn't pay, the slave rejected his pleas for mercy. He choked his friend and had him thrown in jail. Well, word got out of this. It made its way back to the master who delivered that servant over to the jailers until the debt would be paid. And since the debt was so enormous, that would have been an eternal sentence. Now, to make it kind of worse, the Greek word that's used there for jailers can also be translated as tormentors. So the fate of that slave was going to be the bleakest of the bleak, eternal torment. Now, it's important that we understand exactly what Jesus is trying to say. Jesus is not lecturing us on proper personal financial decisions, although he likes it when we're wise with our finances. Jesus is not advocating for the practice of debtor's prison, 
But instead, he's talking about forgiveness. Forgiveness is a very crucial part of the Christian life because each one of us has a debt that we have to deal with with God. Not a financial debt because we don't owe God money, but it's a debt of sin. And just like all the other debts, the debt of sin is not going to just somehow magically go away. We can't just forget about the house payment or the car payment because if you do that, that brings about consequences. And in the same way, you can't just ignore your sin debt because doing so would bring about eternal consequences of the gravest nature. So, like always, when Jesus tells a parable, there's an underlying message that he wants us to hear and understand. And it's the same thing today. Jesus is describing an unpaid debt to us in earthly terms, but in reality, he's talking about the debt of our sinfulness. In the parable, the slave is our human sinful nature, and the master in the parable is God. Now, when you revisit the parable, the first thing to take note of is the slave's debt. The text said he owed the master 10,000 talents. Now, sitting here today in 21st century America, you have no idea how much 10,000 talents is. But if you run it through economic conversion charts and inflation calculators, 10,000 talents in Jesus' day is equal today in American dollars of just over three billion dollars. So on a slave salary, there's absolutely no way that this debt could ever possibly be repaid. It's just simply too high. Just like our sin debt to God. By nature, we're so sinful that it's absolutely impossible to think we could ever settle the ledger with God. When we look at how enormous the slave's debt is, we begin to understand the depths of our sinfulness and the level of depravity of our sinful nature. If we stop and think about every command that God gives and that we owe God in a sort every time we break a command in thought, word, or deed, it would take no time at all to rack up quite a substantial debt. Think about all of the Ten Commandments. God tells us to never worry. God tells us to always forgive no matter what. God tells us to rejoice in our trials. And we're not very good at doing any of these things. So if God came to address our sin debt with us and said to us, pay up, our situation would be as hopeless as that slave's. And the fate would be the same. Handed over to eternal torment. But something happened that changed your eternal destiny. That sin debt of yours wasn't ignored. It was actually addressed. God the Father did rise up and demand payment. But when the Father said, pay up, somebody stood up in your place. Somebody willingly chose to take on that impossible debt for you. Somebody loved you enough to save you from that horrible fate. And that somebody was your heaven-sent Savior, your Lord Jesus Christ. Because of Jesus, when God demands payment and you beg for mercy, you will be shown mercy. The slave said in verse 26, Have patience with me and I will pay you everything. Well, the slave never could have paid everything, but the point is that when we beg accordingly, God knows that our debt likewise could never be repaid. But notice that the slave owner in the parable didn't negotiate some sort of payment plan. He didn't work out some kind of backroom deal. He just simply forgave the whole thing. He didn't ask for repayment at all. He just said, forget it. You're forgiven. And you will receive mercy in the same way. Not because God's going to choose just to forget it. 
But you're going to receive mercy because the debt that couldn't possibly be paid was paid. Jesus paid your sin debt with the Father and he paid it in full. He didn't use money. He didn't cut a deal. He didn't co-sign a loan. Instead, he retired the sin debt of the entire world with something much more valuable than those things. Jesus paid for all of your sins by the shedding of his own blood. You see, Jesus loved you enough to buy your way out of hell and into heaven. And he did so by paying the ultimate price for everyone. Anybody can write a check. But Jesus gave his very life so that you would live forever through him. You have been rescued from eternal torment and given a room in the kingdom of heaven for all eternity. It's waiting on you right now by the mighty hand of God through the saving death of his son on the cross. Jesus willingly chose to take all of your sins on his shoulders. Every sin you have ever committed or ever will commit, Jesus took upon himself and died with all of it. And what did that cost you? Absolutely nothing. What price did you have to pay? Not one thin dime. You have received salvation and you received it at no cost to you whatsoever. God calls you his children because you believe in his Son as Lord and Savior. You have been given holiness and righteousness and now are deserving of heaven, but you were made that way because of the blood of Jesus alone. Your sin debt has been retired. Now God gave and God continues to keep giving. In your baptism, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That helper that God promised to send. And the Holy Spirit causes us to believe in Jesus as Lord. Causes us to repent. The Holy Spirit causes us to love God with all of our hearts and all of our souls. And causes us to love our neighbors as ourselves. So thanks to the Holy Spirit, now we hear God's word. We give him thanks and praise for paying our sin debt. And we gladly honor his command. So now, when somebody wrongs us, our sinful flesh is going to react the way the slave did in the parable, showing absolutely no mercy for our fellow man in spite of the mercy that God has shown us. In the parable, you should understand the absurd disparity in the debts. The servant was forgiven a debt of over $3 billion, yet he wouldn't forgive a debt of 100 denarii, which in today's American money is about 50 bucks. But that's not who we are as children of God. The Holy Spirit enables us to act like Joseph did from the Old Testament. As you heard, he set aside any hard feelings because of the injustice of it all that was done to him, and he simply forgave and loved. By the power of the Holy Spirit, a redeemed child of God has the love of Christ in their heart, so we gladly forgive. So go joyously today, knowing that your sins have been forgiven and they're remembered by God no more. So when God the Father reviews your sin ledger because of Jesus, he will proclaim your debt paid in full. Thanks be to God. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until his second coming. Amen. We rise for the singing of hymn 941.